Okay, I believe we're we're set to go now, Madam Clerk. We're ready to record. Uh, I'll call the regular meeting of the Pittsburgh Board of Commissioners for Monday, January 12, 2015, to order and ask for a moment of silence. Consent agenda, and I see we have two items on there the December 8th meetings and the setting of a public hearing for the annexation of the new newly acquired Pittsburgh Fourth property. Any uh, changes or anything to be removed from the consent agenda? If not, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Second. Second. All in favor of the consent agenda? Is it is presented? Uh, All right. opposed? If you have opposed, the consent agenda is approved. And now we need to go on to the regular agenda. With that, we'll go to public hearing. One of the old one of the new business and the manager's update. And, and closed session. Any other additions, changes, modifications to the agenda before I we approve that. Make a motion to approve the regular meeting agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. The agenda is approved. Let's see here. I have uh, the clerk has given me no citizens to speak under citizen matters. Therefore, we can uh, move into the uh, public hearing on the rezoning request for the used property. We need a motion to go into public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All opposed, we are in public hearing. And I guess, uh, Mr. Bass, are you going to introduce this plan? There he is. Thank you. Yes, sir. This is rezoning 2014-02 as amended. The uh, proposal was uh, originally submitted to rezone from R15 to R10. Um, however, if you have in your packet there the uh, amended application to the zoning district of R12. Uh, we had a previous uh, public hearing back in October, but um, since the application was uh, amended, uh, state law requires a, a new and separate public hearing. So that's why it's in front of you tonight. Um, I won't go into all the details. Uh, nothing has changed from the previous submission with the exception of the, the requested zoning district, same land area, same size. And the primary difference with the R10 and R12 was the R10 district would allow for a um, multifamily type apartment complex with special use permit. However, that is not um, a possibility in the R12 district. The, the difference between the existing R15 district and the R12 district is that um, you can have uh, duplexes and our pocket neighborhood is permitted by right in the R12 district. Um, the planning board also took a look at this uh, revised proposal at its regularly scheduled meeting last week on January 5th and um, is recommending uh, approval of this proposed rezoning request. Can you entertain any questions? Thank you. Any questions from the board on this one? Um, question. 
uh, correct me if I'm incorrect, um, but I, I'm thinking that there are some other differences in land use available to R12 versus R15. And my reading of the chart indicates that medical offices and other professional offices are permitted by special use permit. And can you, is that, am I reading that right? In the R12? Yeah. I don't have that committed to memory, I'm sorry, right. but I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. But well, it would be good if we, we had that document here just to confirm. <coughs> Yeah, sure, that's correct. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions from the board? <coughs> we have one other. Uh, what would be the maximum number of dwelling units permitted in R12? And would there be any difference in the number of units between uh, the single family residence type or the two family residence type? I have done a rough calculation, but I don't have those notes in front of me. So I would say it was. Yeah, I think paragraph four says 30, 30 lots. Oh, I did put it in there. Thirty-seven. Yeah. Okay. Page two. So thirty-seven lots, but would that translate to dwelling units also, i.e., thirty-seven um, resident, two-family residences? The the way the table reads, the the, the 12,000 square foot size gets applied to the individual unit. Okay. So whether it's single right. family or multifamily, there's only going to be 37 right. dwelling units. Right. Okay. At least that's my interpretation. You know, if somebody wanted to argue, we could, we could do somebody that. would have to argue with you. Yeah. And if they didn't like your answer, they'd go to the Board of Adjustment. That's right. Okay. That's all I have. Okay, any other questions? Does the applicant uh, wish to address the board for okay. I have one, one question. Could you tell I got I'm sorry, I'm back. Of what what you have told Commissioner Fioco about the uh, offices? Mm -hmm. Could you repeat that please? Right yeah, um, general office, medical office, according to the table of permitted uses, are allowed per special use permit. And the special use permit is a, a quasi-judicial process, the way it's set up in the ordinance that the town board would have to approve. Okay, but by special use. Yeah. All right, thank yeah, you. So, so not by right. The, the duplexes in the pocket neighborhood are permitted by right. They can, in the R12 zone. All right, thank you. Okay, we, we do have one speaker who has asked to be heard uh, on this uh, public hearing. That would be Mr. Wilson, 233 Churchwood Lane. Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Good evening. I must admit that I am not familiar with the, uh, the regulations and the uh, culture of speaking, so if there's any procedure I should follow, please let me know. No, this is this is your opportunity to be heard uh, about any concerns or questions you have about the, the proposed result. I appreciate that. Um, clearly there's one person speaking against and Mr. Hughes uh, speaking for. He and I are neighbors and as a neighbor I hate to stand up here and, you know, uh, uh, resist his plans to what he wants to do with his land but as an adjacent property owner of 233 Churchwood Lane which is the house directly uh, behind his which 
includes the right-of-way easement that will become a uh, Churchwood Loop to allow traffic in and out of this. Uh, I, I think that uh, my piece of property and my house and my family will be uh, significantly impacted uh, with the change from R15 to R12. Um, now the, the attorney said it's his opinion that 37 dwelling units will be there and of course that's subject to legal um, debate and if a builder does buy this and it, it's the builder's attorney opinion that uh, 74 units could be built with two cars per dwelling. Now we're up to 150 vehicles. Figure two ways in, one by my land and one out, uh, running uh, as part of Cornwallis Road. That's 75 cars potentially per day that would be traveling what is right now a, a one-car <coughs> driveway from Churchwood Lane into my house. Uh, so. I, I'm concerned uh, about that, and <coughs> I'm also concerned that the entire neighborhood, as it is right now, is zoned R15. Um, the subdivisions that we're in, the 10 acres behind it, and much of the neighborhood along the 15501 <coughs> are zoned for R15 right now. And you know, if it was zoned differently when I made the decision to purchase uh, in 2010, uh, my decision may have been impacted by that. But, uh, so I do hope that you take into uh, consideration uh, my thoughts as an impacted citizen of the town you know, that would feel an impact by this uh, adjustment if a builder comes in and, you know, has a, has a different opinion, and, um, and the traffic does increase significantly through, through my property. And I do appreciate your time. Thank you. <clears throat> I just have one, just like, you chalk this up to a curiosity question to the applicant, uh, Mr. Hughes doesn't mind, uh, wondering what uh, you, know, you withdrew your, your application to rezone this to R10 and decided that uh, you would rather do R12. Can you, would you share with us what motivated you to do that, why you chose to change that? I didn't think it was a good place for apartments. Okay. So this is your, your, your personal decision to... And the neighbors complain. I try yeah. to get along with my neighbors. Okay, so that's just an, a, a voluntary accommodation to after hearing some of the input from you. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Okay, we have, uh, we have no other questions of the applicant or the, the planner. Uh, we have no other speakers uh, entertain a motion to go out of public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Opposed? We can move to our only order of old business, which is. Uh, Stormwater Administration Manual Report from uh, the County Engineer, Mr. Royal. Good evening. This is a follow-up from a discussion we had several meetings ago about our stormwater ordinance and some uh, kind of a uh, housekeeping we're doing to get the stormwater ordinance to where it needs to be uh, according to what the provisions are. And, and so this uh, stormwater um, administrative manual, it is required by the ordinance and um, it just took this much time for me to essentially develop it. Although we've moved forward with issuing stormwater permits pursuant to the ordinance, this, this is still something that we needed to do. Um, I'm not going to go point by point, section by section in the document, um, which is draft. Uh, I'll just quickly uh, go over the highlights. Um, the, 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 per the real purpose of this is to make it clear to developers and landowners 
what the process is to follow our ordinance to get a stormwater discharge permit. Um, the ordinance is not an easy read, so it's very difficult to figure out what it is that's required. So that's the intent of this manual. So hopefully, um, if you've managed to read most of it, it, it should read reasonably easily and in decent um, stages that's, that's inherently um, understandable by anyone. So if you found anything to be um, uncertain or um, awkward or, or unclear, just please let me know. But um, I'm still reviewing it as a draft, reviewing it as a draft. Uh, it, do, it does have quite a few appendices which are not included in this document. I can provide those um, um, either way to the commissioners. So um, bottom line is um, there's a lot of legal stuff that's required here in the back end of it. Um, there's technical stuff in the front end of what's required for my review. And in the back end, it's uh, the as-built drawings, the operations and maintenance um, manuals, um, the uh, declaration of maintenance covenant, um, which has to be recorded at the county, and as well as the as-built. So there's some legal um, barriers in the way before you can get a certificate of occupancy. Um, one of the biggest questions, basically, for, for you is the surety piece. Um, we have not required to date um, bonding or surety or performance surety for long-term maintenance of the best management practices. We just have not required that because we just haven't gotten there to decide how to handle that. Um, Mr. Messick has given us some ideas on ways to do that if we wish to go that route through cash, um, bonds, um, there's three methods. And um, that's something we can discuss because it does put in a financial burden on developers or on landowners um, as well as um, myself and just getting the administrative paperwork accomplished. So. Um, Moving forward, um, I would recommend that we maybe wait on the long-term maintenance surety issue so we can see how it's going with these new BMPs getting built. Um, that's, that's my recommendation, but it doesn't mean it has to be what we go with, and that we do require uh, construction surety so that the performance so that they get built properly. And then, then we can release the, the funds as soon as I do my final inspection. And if we are assured that it's built properly, then we can release the funds. Um, there, is, there is a provision in the ordinance that says uh, HOAs, homeowner associations, um, must have um, long-term escrow. To me, that's a little easier to do because that's only for HOAs. That's not for individuals or single businesses. Um, it's for actual HOAs, which will, it, it will require some more administrative work, but I, I think there's a valid reason to do it that way. Mostly, uh, based on my experience, HOAs are not aware of the BMPs and they don't have funding when the BMPs require maintenance. And it's a big surprise to them when they realize they have to come up with some money to maintain the, 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 the best management practice. So. Um, it also has a flow chart that I have to look at carefully to make sure it's easy to understand. Uh, at first blush, it looked a little confusing to me, so I have to go over it with the uh, consultant. Jewel Engineering helped me put this together with some, a small contract. Um, and there's a few other things I'm going to look at and um, clarify. But anyway, for now, it's just for your consideration um, as a draft. If you, I guess, if you like it, the recommendation is to, um, I recommend to approve it, and then I could come back to you for a final, uh, if you wish, or if you want to keep it as a draft and see the final product, I can do that as well. And I can also provide all the appendices. I, I have one copy of um, the Declaration of Maintenance Covenant tonight. Actually, I actually have two copies, and the rest I would have to get to you via email or um, hard copy. Yeah, 
I would like the appendices, definitely. Um, and uh, I hear what you're saying about a draft work in progress. Um, I do have some comments, um, but uh, I don't want us necessarily to get bogged down this evening because I can easily provide this feedback to you offline in an email. Sure. Um, otherwise, we could be here for a while. Be happy to take comments, okay. um, email, and I can come back and describe the comments and describe what, what I did with them. And yeah. No problem. One of the oh, absolutely. Yeah. One of the things I, w I would note, and um, I just, this is a, a philosophical approach to this kind of information, is we've got an ordinance that says, here's what's required, and then this touches on, tries to explain what that ordinance is saying, and then in some cases, I think, is regurgitating the ordinance. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, and so what I think is a problem from an administrative perspective is if the ordinance changes, somebody's got to remember, oh yeah, we have the exact same language that needs to change in this other document. So if there's a way not to be redundant, mm -hmm. there's less risk of yeah, the documents being in conflict with each other in the future. So that's a general philosophical statement that I would, I would add. Can I guess so to, to help me connect the dots here, make sure I'm on the right page, we, this, this is an administrative manual that we've adopted that supports an ordinance that we adopted over a year ago the, when we put in the Jordan Lake requirements for new development. Is that right? That's correct. I'm on the right subject here. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what this is, is uh, that, that becomes town law. This is a sort of a how-to manual to help people who are in the business of development understand what they have to do. Correct. Okay, so Including myself, okay. understanding what it is. I'm it, it appears to me that it's somewhat useful in its current form, even though it's incomplete and the board had approved it. So uh, I guess uh, uh, there's a question anywhere in my realm. Like it's, uh, what, what's the sense of urgency that we, the board finally approved this? Can we, can we wait? Can we see your appendices? And uh, are yes. you still using it as a draft to help guide people through their processes? I have not. I'm not using this at all with the, the public. Yeah, okay. This internal document. Okay. At this point, the way I issue permits now is I um, I tell them what the ordinance says, okay. and just say you know it's 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 not ad hoc, but it's not well defined. Okay. So the, the the intent here is to be kind of well defined, including a checklist of you know what do I have to submit to the town to get a permit? You know what's yeah. what's the goalpost look like? Okay. So that that's the intent of this. Okay. Well, I said that no, no, I understand that. I, I would. Just comment that uh, this appears to me to be a very well written document. I, I think you did a good job. Uh, like Commissioner Fioco, I'd like to see it at 100% before we adopt it. If it, unless there's some compelling sense of urgency to do that sooner. And um, what, how much time do you think we're talking about <coughs> now and the time we would be able to take the draft off here and call it a finished product? Um, I would guess. Um, the next meeting, or or the or the or about a month from now, um, I'd, I'd like to try to get this thing kind of ironed out, yeah. finished out. But if there's comments from the board, you can shoot them to me over the okay. next week or two. Um, I'll take those and do my own work and okay. um, finish up the appendices, make sure all the appendices are correct and in good order. Okay, understand. I think it's my last question before I go on to others is. Uh, would it be a correct to assume that this will eventually get incorporated into the UDO? Is this part of the Unified Development Ordinance since it relates to land use management? Development, so yeah. This will become a chapter correct. of the UDO yeah. at some point. Chapter or article or whatever the UDO. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I have been thought, isn't that correct, Stuart? This is a stormwater ordinance, it's kind of development related where it would fit in there. Nice or is it the ordinance? The ordinance. The, UDO. Yeah. The, or the ordinance. This is the administrative manual. Yeah, the right. So this Which would not be a requirement. Yeah, this is more like a policy document. So it would not be in the yeah, UDO. Right. This is a how-to cookbook to help people walk through the process. It would not mm -hmm. be in the UDO. Okay. So Our stormwater ordinance states that we will have this document, and yeah. basically, it indicates that we will provide 
applicants with the requirements of an application, the submission schedule, the fee schedule, a copy of the ordinance, and then instruct them as to how and where they can gain access to the design manual, which is the state BMP manual. So it has those five requirements. Okay, well, I'm, I guess I'd, my preference for action tonight would just be to, uh, as we've already done, and you've invited us to uh, email you any comments we have and uh, let you continue to refine the document and bring it back to us uh, two weeks uh, a month when, when you, you're comfortable that it's ready for, for final approval. That's the consensus of the board. Does everybody feel good with that? And with a special uh, look at the surety issue, um, it's it's our choice. It's not a requirement. Yeah, Long-term maintenance for BMPs. Yeah, and having wrestled with one of those uh, in my past, that you know, you know, I might want to include Nancy and Mr. Messick and uh, uh, how you, who, who's going to be the custodian of, uh, you know, of uh, letters of credit and bonds and whatnot that, uh, who's going to keep the calendar on when those things are expiring. Uh, that, that, that someone can even figure out that level of detail of those things. So, uh, the experience of losing track of one and that uh, wasn't a good experience. So. Anyway. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Wood? Thank you. Thank you, Fred. The only item of old business on the line of new business is the uh, wastewater allocation request from Walker Auto Parts. Mr. Bess, can you introduce this one? This is an allocation request for wastewater based on our adopted policy. This is a, a small request of only 125 gallons per day to serve a approximately 6,750 square foot retail, retail building. And um, the proposed site is actually just across the street here, the, the Food Line Shopping Center. Um, and you have in the packet there the uh, request letter as, as well as some um, information spreadsheet there with previous allocations granted and just the, the, a plot plan there of the site. Um, the recommendation is for approval of this uh, wastewater allocation request and the amount specified. A site plan has been submitted and is currently under review and we expect that that should be on the, the board's uh, regular agenda session sometime next month for uh, review and approval. Okay. I don't have any questions about this one. Does any other board member have questions? What's the proposed use? It's the auto, auto park store. Okay, gotcha. Staff recommendation is for approval of this. Do I hear a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. None be opposed. Uh, the allocation is awarded. See that brings us to uh, managers' capital projects update. I didn't see anything in the package on that, so I guess we'll get it verbal tonight. Uh, just as a reminder, you have uh, scheduled a February 2nd um, retreat. Mm -hmm. uh, that's on Monday. And uh, scheduled that with David Long at 8.30 a.m. until into the afternoon, probably. 4, 4.30 or so, or whenever um, we feel it's appropriate to break. Uh, at this point in time, unless I hear otherwise, we're planning on providing uh, a, a lunch um, that um, doesn't have to be very greasy. We're thinking subs or something along those lines. If somebody has some other suggestion for so, um, You'll recall that, um, that we um, are seeking uh, assistance with uh, providing some input regarding our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, and uh, uh, Fred and the uh, 
uh, a brave team of advisors uh, have met and reviewed some uh, proposals, uh, and they'll be uh, interviewing um, possible uh, contractors on January 29. Uh, January 29, PER interviews still scheduled? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, 10 o'clock and 11.30. Okay. So we'll be providing feedback on that. I think we've received two applicants and we may look at a third. Uh, we received four and we selected two. We'll select two to review. To review. review and there's, there's a third all. If there's a problem, we got a third all. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so moving along. Good. I'm sorry. I was right. I didn't. What was that application on? Um, that was a, uh, I guess, an RF uh, a request for qualifications uh, for a firm to assist us with uh, potential uh, upgrade uh, or expansion issues with our existing wastewater treatment. Okay. Okay. Um, locally, on a, on a smaller level, we've had uh, two breaks, uh, two water main breaks slash leaks since the last time we met. There was one in uh, mid-December uh, in the traffic circle. Uh, and then there was another one just this past week on Thompson Street. Uh, the one, uh, the one in the traffic circle, the leak of the traffic circle was uh, repaired, uh, but um, we're not really satisfied with uh, the surfacing job in there. So we're going to try to work out um, another. Um, I don't want to call it a patching job, but another resurfacing job um, on the admin side of the circle, the admin building side of the circle. So we have a bunk there. And uh, I think we can do a little bit better than that. The one on Thompson Street, uh, there's a small patch that we had to open up to repair a, a water service, a leaking water service. Uh, and uh, so as soon as the weather cooperates, we'll be fixing, uh, we'll be fixing that one uh, as well. Uh, uh, in both cases, our crews did a pretty good job of uh, catching up and fixing them in not really optimal conditions. So. Um, uh, quick question. Did that did the one at the circle have any relationship to the Hillsborough Street uh, project or was it farther down? No, uh, that was um, not a not a direct relationship to any of the work that um, any of the new transmission line. Yeah. Farther who was farther south of the circle than that. Yeah. It was kind of a leftover line there, so I'm probably aware there's a bit of a skip a bit of a spaghetti bowl as far as yeah. the lines over in that area and, and uh, smaller ones and this one. Uh, this one suffered leaking problems similar to what we were having in some of the other areas. It was, it's that time of year when things kind of wear on the hardware and the uh, leak springs and that uh, pops up. <coughs> um, we have uh, internally, as, as far as staff is concerned, we've completed, uh, uh, we've completed some performance reviews and um, individual strategic planning with. Um, with department heads this, uh, over the course of this past uh, week and a half. Um, uh, and I think key to that really isn't so much a performance review as it is a, a strategic individual strategic planning session with each department head to try to key in on uh, some of the things that we want to work on over the course of uh, next year. And uh, we take then some of that information and then uh, hopefully feed some of that into um, uh, some of the discussion that we'll be having at the retreat, but uh, then overall really kind of looking at ways to focus on the strengths and attacks and the weaknesses and, um, in, in what we do here on a daily basis. So uh, really good. I think across the board uh, we had some really good conversations and I think we've got a really good team that's been, uh, that's been working for us here. So uh, really looking forward to next year. Um, I have, uh, if you recall it, uh, I think maybe the, the I guess the last time we had met was the first December meeting, and um, we discussed briefly uh, Pittsburgh Place, and uh, talks are, are continuing with, uh, with Pittsburgh Place and, and what they want to do with that property, and uh, Mr. Messick and I will be meeting with, uh, with them over the course of uh, the next couple of weeks and, and coming up with a recommendation on that. Um, so uh, that, that process, at least in one shape, uh, kind of uh, appears to be ready to move off center a little bit. Um, we've got some other development uh, projects in process, and we're looking forward to uh, reporting out uh, on those. Um, but uh, uh, we have to let those perk, 
manipulate a little bit. Um, and then also, too, um, I would point out in your packet, um, it, was, it was discussed at a previous meeting, uh, the date of the Christmas party, or Christmas party, the uh, date of the Christmas break. And um, um, uh, we managed to collect uh, some dates in the area, uh, Christmas parades, and uh, uh, certainly if, if, if we, we need or would like to review how we fit into that, uh, then certainly that's, that's open for discussion. But uh, maybe for future reference, uh, at least we have that, uh, uh, that information uh, ready to go for when it's appropriate. Um, and also, too, uh, I'd point you um, in your packet to two other items, um, one being a uh, memo from the finance officer uh, regarding some information that we should have uh, from the School of Government uh, on uh, some, some rate study. And I think there's, uh, there's been some good work that's been put into that, and uh, uh, we'll be having some, some discussion on that probably by the next meeting. On the 26th. On the 26th. It will be ready then. should check for that. And then also, too, um, Mr. Royal had included uh, the executive summary from the Jordan Lake Partnership uh, application. Uh, I think we've reported out on that uh, a few times uh, in recent meetings, but um, um, I know I have to read this stuff repeatedly in order to stay on top of it, and I think if anything, it's a good way uh, for us to do that um, uh, with that piece. Uh, and with that, I would uh, step back and any other comments or questions or concerns that the board might have. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Thank Ms. Emsley for her uh, moving the ball forward on the, uh, the rate issue. I appreciate that. I look forward to hearing uh, from you in 26. Uh, any questions for the manager on any of that? Uh, EDC updates. I don't have anything. Uh, there's an EDC board meeting tomorrow morning, so I'll, uh, I'll be at that. And, uh, some things may emerge from that that I'll share with the board, but I don't have anything new as we speak. Uh, RPO, anybody have any, anything to share on that? Okay. Solid Waste Advisory has been sort of quiet. Is there anything? Parked up on that with the new county board? No. Okay. Okay, fairgrounds. Okay. Uh, Downtown Merchants Association. Uh, the PBA, as I think Beth mentioned um, several meetings ago, was, is very interested in doing something with the Christmas parade date. Uh, it is on a first Sunday, and they'd like to. Uh, their preference would be to move that to the second Sunday so that they could have two events. Um, they think that the Christmas parade actually takes from their first Sunday, so um, perhaps it's something we could discuss at the retreat. That's what we think. Yeah, that'd be good. They they to do it with it. Yeah, because they reiterated, reiterated that at the last meeting that I attended. So. Yeah, they basically said that have them on different dates and that, that provides them with two events that draw people down to the heaven all in one. And that's a really important time of year for the promotions. I thought I heard one comment that moving it to a week later was too close to the holiday period. A lot of people were already going to the holiday uh, uh, travel plans and whatnot. But they, so maybe the, the Saturday before, I see there's already a couple of other mm -hmm. that are doing it on Saturday the 6th. Uh, perhaps that's be on our short list of things to consider is having it the day before or first Sunday for Duncan suggestions. So maybe the retreat is a good place to hash that out. Okay. Any other updates about any of that? Okay, we have uh, Commissioner Cern concerns and then a closed session. Uh, before we get into Commissioner concerns, I want to invite uh, uh, any commissioner who would like to ask me questions about the uh, recent letter to the editor that I wrote to do that during the Commissioner concerns portion and not save that for the closed session. I think the closed session is. Uh, specifically set aside for the attorney to offer us uh, an update on pending litigation and any 
discussion about uh, letters that I have written to the press, uh, more appropriately discussed in open uh, open session. So I invite you to, if you have questions, to ask them of me now, and I'll do my best to respond to them. And with that, we will uh, go into commissioner concerns, and I'll ask uh, Commissioner Farrell first to offer his concerns. I don't have any concerns right now, other than. Uh, the uh, paragraph. I just got the email because I've had a problem with my email, but I, I question about going in closed session. I, if this is a personnel matter, it should be in closed session, shouldn't it? Yeah, what extent? What extent? Like to what extent would it be a personnel matter? Uh, the mayor. Uh, any comments on this? I mean, have we not gone to closed session before? Yeah, I'm not comfortable doing that. If you, if, if you all have questions of me, uh, ask them now, and I'll be happy to answer them. I'm sure I have questions. Uh, like I said, I just got the information about an hour ago, so uh, okay. I'm not too prepared. I did not have email, like I said, since uh, just before Christmas. Okay, and then I would also extend an uh, invitation to anybody who is prefers not to discuss it in an open session, uh, I'd be happy to, to schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings with anybody who uh, has any concerns about anything I've said, uh, communicated to the press. If you'd rather not discuss it in open session, uh, I don't think it's appropriate to do it in closed session. I'd be happy to meet with you one-on-one -on -one at your convenience. So if, if you want to wait I, do don't, that. I don't think it's necessary to go one-on-one -on -one with it, but... Uh, I do have some concerns with what I've just read in regard, you know, that I understand the mayor is supposed to be a part of this board or part of this town, and uh, I'm not, I'm a little discouraged about uh, the confidence in our staff or the confidence that the mayor may have in the board. I'm just really confused on uh, some of these articles. Okay. So if you, if you want to take more time to absorb that information and ask your questions at the next meeting, I'd be happy to do it then, too. Um, I have a comment. I, I don't understand why we can't have that discuss that in closed session. Is that would that be an option for us, Mr. Method? Uh, yes, ma'am. I think it could be. Because I do have some concerns with both of those. Um, okay. Excuse me. I've got. If the issue is the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, appointment, or removal of a member of the public body, it's not to be considered in uh, close session. Well, uh, I think some of the things that were said in there is related to personnel. And I don't think that that would be appropriate to be discussed other than in closed session because it is related to personnel. At least in that letter, according to what was written, it did reference personnel. Mm -hmm. Well, I defer to the attorney. Where we don't have we don't have that on the agenda for tonight uh, as an item. We didn't amend the agenda. If you want to. Uh, you want to pursue that in closed session, uh, I'm happy to do that to the extent that I remain comfortable, but I reserve the right to curtail the discussion if I think we're violating the open meetings law and uh, discussing things that would be better discussed in open session. I don't have a problem with the open meetings law, but if it's personnel, it wouldn't be fair to talk about a personnel issue in public. In the public. And according to what was written in the letter, it is in reference to personnel in some portions of it. Okay, well, let's let's just proceed and uh, go through commissioner concerns. And anybody who's got a question they're comfortable asking, ask it. If you're not comfortable, hold it for later. And uh, like I said, we can, we can take them one at a time and uh, it'll depend on your comfort level, my comfort level, and the attorney's comfort level about whether or not it's an appropriate discussion for a closed session or it's more appropriately discussed in open session. So let's
let's just let's just take it one step at a time, and uh, we'll just move through it that way. So, Mr. Fairley, you have anything else? No, I'm not just not really on it. Okay, that's no, so. fine. Mr. Foley. I don't have anything. Uh, my um, concern and interest is um, a status report on where we stand with our concept for reviewing the small area plans. I know we uh, had set that as a priority to accomplish by the end of the year, so I just want to know, are we close? Uh, will we be seeing something soon? Uh, have we been able to make progress on that? I know I said I could do that without any problems, but um, I don't think you said that. I think yeah. you said there would be problems. Yeah, the past couple of months have, have just been jam packed, and so um, I actually uh, had a conversation with our consulting firm that's working on the EDO last uh, Tuesday, I think, and um, we brainstormed some some ideas, several options, and they're in the process of uh, fleshing something out and. You know, going to get get something here in writing uh, within the next week. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? No, that's it. Commissioner Baldwin. I don't have anything in particular. Other than I do have one question, though, okay. and I think we can talk about that in public regarding the comprehensive. Plan. You said that the town does not have a comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why do you say that the town doesn't have a comprehensive plan? Well, it's because I've personally never seen it. I, I have uh, my my uh, history and experience comes from another municipality where I actually participated in the preparation or review of the comprehensive plan. Had a minor uh, a role in that. And reviewing uh, chapters on uh, adequate public facilities and sustainability and the like and uh, when the term adopted comprehensive plan appears in a document before me that uh, brings to mind you know, that 200 and some page document that I had the opportunity to participate in in a previous jurisdiction. Uh, we got a memorandum from the attorney today that uh, we're, we're in, he outlined uh, uh, the North Carolina statutory definition of the term comprehensive plan and how it relates to uh, uh, municipal governments and I now better understand his characterization of comprehensive plan with a small c as opposed to comprehensive plan with a big c uh, and I can see how uh, that distinction made it uh, made, may have made him comfortable in accepting uh, a text authored by the developer's attorney and put into our ordinances. Uh, he, he may have, uh, as one attorney to another, found uh, that that was a comfortable thing to do. Uh, although I think they, uh, and it helped me get a little more comfortable with it, but I still think that when you use the term adopted comprehensive plan, uh, the memo the attorney provided would have been much more helpful if I had seen that a month, a month and a half ago, so that I had that, that information. It would have saved me an hour uh, looking through all my files and folders for a plan that I thought I had inadvertently failed to read and uh, discover. Uh, and so I, I went through uh, the town's website looking for the adopted comprehensive plan. I went through all the folders where I have. Uh, collected uh, our various land use planning documents looking for the adopted comprehensive plan uh, and arrived at the conclusion that we didn't have one. And then later did I get did we see the memo that explains uh, how attorneys talk about comprehensive plans. So uh, that's how I came to the position uh, that I took in that letter that I wrote. And I still, you know, would say that we don't have a Adopted Comprehensive Plan, capital C. Uh, now, based on Mr. Messick's uh, explanation, I understand that the collection of all of our various land use planning documents, whether that be the land use plan, the uh, zoning ordinance, the uh, subdivision ordinance, the stormwater plan, all of those, according to general statutes, can be characterized as our.
comprehensive plans. But I question whether or not, I certainly didn't, you know, if, if I was voting on that ordinance and uh, making the assertion that I believe that the, uh, the developer's uh, master plan and the rezoning was consistent with all of that collection of plans. I certainly didn't review all those plans against that ordinance, and I don't know how I would have been able to certify that, lacking the knowledge that that's what was meant by that term. So that's my response to that question. And I'm better informed today, but still not happy with the wording in the, in the ordinance. The statute requires that there be a statement that it is or is not in compliance or consistent with the comprehensive plan, and the comprehensive plan is not what you understood it to be. Correct. So that memo would have been much more useful six weeks ago than it was this afternoon. But you had no doubt on the issue as to what a comprehensive plan was, because I heard you just explain how you had doubt, yet you expressed in public certainty about what a comprehensive plan is and what it isn't, and went on to say that we don't have one, yet we do. Yeah, I understand, I understand Mr. Messick's interpretation of that, yeah. Do you doubt the interpretation or the legality of his interpretation? I, I don't doubt that two attorneys would agree that we have a comprehensive plan. Do you think that we don't have a comprehensive plan that meets the statutory requirements? I, I no longer doubt that. So you agree that we do have a comprehensive plan that meets the statutory requirements? Yes, I do. Great. Would you like to retract anything in your letter that states otherwise at this time? Would you like to prepare a correction for the record? Well, I'll, I'll and publish that as well. I'll consider that. I'll, I'll give that some thought. On that note, then, Mr. Messick, do you mind just quoting specifically what the comprehensive plan in, entails? Uh, I did not bring that memo, but essentially, it is any uh, adopted plan of the local government unit that is comprehensive in terms of uh, dealing with the entire planning jurisdiction of the municipality. Um, cases have said that if you have a comprehensive map that shows the whole t territory and you have an ordinance that applies across the board for the whole territory, then that in and of itself is sufficient for a comprehensive plan under the statute. Uh, the, the word has been there since 1928 um, and it has come up from time to time and obviously circumstances today are much different than they were 50, 60 years ago in terms of what planners do and what planning is able to produce. Um, and North Carolina has, I mean, what, what I just told you is the, is, the, is the legal standard. Now obviously in many jurisdictions the, um, the kind of plan that Mr. Terry is talking about is, is, is popular, it has a lot of benefits to it, uh, it is used a lot, and uh, we are gradually, I think, evolving to a position where, you know, more of that is going to be seen than, than not. And the issues of whether or not a proposed development is considered to be consistent, which is also not defined, um, or, or, or not, is going to be, become more important. And there, there are many jurisdictions that, that require consistency as a matter of law before an application can be approved. We're not there, and we may not ever get there. But we're headed more in that direction than we used to be. So it is, it is an evolving process in, in, in principle. But as of today, we don't have to have that. And if we did have to have that, you have to make a determination whether it is or isn't consistent. But it's not subject to judicial review. So it is sort of half a loaf or nothing none at all. So it's, it's a step in at that direction. But it is certainly not a, a requirement at this point. Uh, Planners are much more able to assimilate information than they used to, uh, and they do a lot more things than they, than they used to, and, and we rely upon them much more than we used to. And we are getting there, um, but we're not, it's not an absolute requirement at this point in terms of the way in which we evaluate requests. If the plan, if you did have a written plan, then you would also have uh, a request to amend that plan at the same time as you have a request to amend the text or amend the map. So that's 
that, that's the way of the future. If, it, if somebody thinks that the plan needs to be changed, they're going to ask you to do that. And, and you have done that already uh, from time to time. So it is not something that is um, necessarily an easy process, um, but it, it, and you all certainly have the, the, the call to make on whether something is consistent, whether in your uh, opinion it's in the best interest of the town. Uh, but that's, that, at least as far as a comprehensive plan element is concerned, that's the state of the law today. Okay, and I again acknowledge that uh, I am today better educated on that uh, uh, based on your legal tutorial that you offered us today. Uh, that being said, if, uh, if with that, armed with that new knowledge, were I reviewing that ordinance again today, I would still uh, stumble over the uh, use in the uh, Exhibit B to that ordinance, the term uh, adopted comprehensive plan, because I think that uh, causes people to uh, ask the question, uh, well, where is that document? I don't believe it says that. I think it says comprehensive plan, including the future of the land use plan and any other adopted plans. Um, I, I don't think it says an adopted comprehensive plan. Is there, do we have, is there anywhere that we have that lists the things that would be part of the comprehensive plan? Because I've never even heard of it either. It seems like if that if we are if we have a collection of things that we consider part of the comprehensive plan, there should at least be a list of what that includes. Well, that's for the board to determine whether that is, is so, so or not. Uh, and the planning board has the right to make that recommendation. The state statute says a comprehensive plan is what? It doesn't. It says a comprehensive plan shall be used in order to evaluate zoning requests. And a zoning and a comprehensive plan can include the um, the land use plan and any other adopted place. You have a lighting plan, you have subdivision regulations, you have stormwater, you have flood hazard, you have all sorts of uh, land use ordinances and regulations that are involved. Or well, it could uh, be involved. Not to be argumentative, Mr. Messick, but Exhibit B, first sentence is the action taken by the Board of Commissioners in approving. Application rezoning uh, 24-1404 is consistent with the adopted comprehensive plan. And again, armed with the new knowledge I have, uh, my objections to the wording of this document might be reduced to just striking that word adopted. You adopted the, the, the ordinance, you adopted the map, and you've adopted all of these different things. That's the same language that has been used in every zoning ordinance that you all have adopted in the last several years. It, there's nothing new about that. It's not unique. Okay. I understand your position. I can understand mine. Statute includes the word adopted. Okay. Commissioner Baldwin, any other questions? Not at this time, but later on. Okay. Commissioner Turner. Um, I was going to talk about the Chatham Conservation Partnership for a minute. Uh, we had another meeting on Thursday. Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And I got to attend this time, and I have to say it's, it's a really good, engaged group. Um, everything that we talked about, I guess we, we went through this document that I'm looking at right now that is called uh, Model Natural Resources Conservation Ordinance. And basically we talked about how we would make decisions. Mr. Culpepper and Mr. Warner were there. Um, consensus versus majority kind of thing. And then we started going through this ordinance and, and, and making ed edits. And I thought it was a really useful little exercise. So um, I was glad to go and hopefully you guys will get to go again. Everything is on this Chatham Conservation Wiki site. So if you guys don't have access to it or whatever, I'm glad to send it because I think it's, it's a good group and um, it's going to be a good little thing for us to get done. So that's all I have. Could you send an email to me? Yeah, I'll forward it. Anything else? Okay, if there are 
are no other commissioner concerns, uh, do I hear a motion to go into closed session? I make a motion that we go into closed session pursuant to GS 143-318.11A3 to consult with the attorney regarding pending litigation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we will go into closed session as soon as the uh, audience has had an opportunity to approach. Thank you.